If anatomy is the study of what's there, physiology is the study of how it functions. Right, Larry? He's a man of few words. Physiology is the study of how the body works. And to understand physiology, we need to understand how all of these systems work together to keep us alive and happy. Our cells are a fickle and delicate bunch. They demand a certain stable environment all the time. Constant temperature, constant pH, they're consuming glucose, they're consuming oxygen, they're putting off carbon dioxide, but they don't like to have too much of it around. So our body has to work really hard to maintain this internal environment for them. Because the survival of our cells is essential for the survival of our body and vice versa. But we take our bodies and to all sorts of extremes. We live in frozen tundras, in deserts. We push ourselves as far as we can, running marathons, climbing mountains where the air is thin. We dive deep under the oceans and we even fly through space. And yet through all of this, we keep ourselves content and happy within that relatively stable internal environment, even though the world outside us is changing dramatically. Physiology comes down to one basic principle, and that's called homeostasis, which means literally to stay the same. And in order to maintain that constant internal environment, that's what we're striving towards. Now, in order to do that, there's a lot of things that we don't think about that our body does. Take regulating our blood pressure, for example. We don't think to ourselves, hmm, our blood pressure is getting a bit low. I should squeeze something and make it come back up. It doesn't work that way. It's being taken care of automatically for us by our brainstem. But there's other factors that we need to put a little bit more effort into. Say, for example, when our glucose gets low. Sure, our body is going to take care of that to try to bring our blood glucose back up internally. But it's also going to trigger us to get hungry. And when we get hungry, we're going to get up off our chair, use our skeletal muscles, and go make ourselves a sandwich. When our fluid balance gets low, not only does our body say, retain water, but it also makes us thirsty, so we go get ourselves a drink. When it's hot, we seek shade, but we also sweat. So all of these factors of things that we're doing consciously and things that we're doing unconsciously help maintain this internal environment, which leads to the expression that physiology explains everything, yet causes nothing. If physiology is doing its job, nothing should be changing inside our body. Yet all of these other things are going on around it to make sure that things remain constant. Your heart beats over 100,000 times a day, every single day of your life, and it can never stop. So with every single beat, it has to be absolutely as efficient as possible. And evolution has taken the heart and made it this beautifully, elegantly simple organ that's pumping constantly to help keep us alive. Here we have a clinically accurate model of the human heart in motion. And what this enables us to do is make parts of it clear so that we can see what's happening inside. You can see the valves opening and closing so that blood only moves in one direction through the heart. And we can also see how the ventricles contract. You see how they're pulling the atrium down towards the apex of the heart, stretching those atria with every beat to help suck blood back from the periphery. The ventricles also twist and they move towards the center to ensure that the maximum amount of blood gets pushed out with every beat. And we even have a virtual reality version where you can reach out and hold the beating heart in your own hand. Physiologists are absolutely crazy and have put their bodies and themselves at risk uh, in order to study this fascinating science. One of my favorite examples is in the late 1700s, a British scientist by the name of Charles Blagden walked into a room that was 113 degrees centigrade. Now that's above boiling point. He walked in with a dog, a steak, and two eggs. They stayed in there for a half an hour, and at the end of it, the dog and Charles walked out, and they had a beautiful steak and egg breakfast. Somehow, despite the fact that this temperature was cooking meat, the human and the dog were able to walk out healthy and alive, and their physiology was maintaining their internal temperature, despite the fact that the external temperature in the room was above the point of order. Another one of my favorite experiments. If you take athletes and you dehydrate them and then put them on stationary bikes, now they start exercising in the heat and their body has a choice to make. Do I keep sweating and lose more fluid even though I'm dehydrated? Or do I 
stop sweating and let my body get hotter and hotter and hotter. So our body has to decide between thermoregulation and fluid balance. And what ultimately happens is the athletes stop sweating. They keep getting hotter and hotter and hotter. But if you give them a drink of water, and here's the best part, you give them a drink of water, the moment that water touches their mouth, the sweat just starts pouring out of them before they even swallow it. Our body has a feedback mechanism built in so that as soon as that water touches our mouth and our body is so desperate for it to be able to cool our body down, that it immediately starts producing sweat to cool our body. I think one of the reasons I'm so passionate about physiology is because it's elegantly simple to understand in the way things work together and the way that our body has evolved, but also incredibly complex in the way that all of the systems in our body have to work together. For example, when our heart gets sick, one of the first signs is that we have trouble breathing. Now, how does that one system affect the other? And at the same time, our kidneys will be working hard to maintain that. We can't understand things in isolation when it comes to physiology. We need to understand the whole body together to be able to do that. And that's why I'm actually very passionate about physiology. And I hope you've enjoyed my lecture. Thanks for watching.